is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Way Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Way Basketball Analysis coming to y'all on my last two season previews. Orlando and Washington tomorrow. I'm going to do Washington and then we're going to start <coughs> the awards. Who gonna win which award and who I think will be the candidates for that award? Um, so let's get into it. The Orlando Magic was a team that was an embarrassment. A lot of people didn't respect them. A lot of people didn't like them. They haven't been to the playoffs since Dwight Howard was there. And <clears throat> crazy thing about it is they was able to get over five hundred with a forty-two and forty record. They gave um, Toronto a loss last year. They made a lot of progress. They brought back a lot of the same players that helped them get to where they are right now. They was a significantly better defensive team, which you really don't see out of a team. You know, you got to put that on the coach for getting everybody to buy in and being strict and making sure everybody are doing everybody doing their job offensively and defensively. Vucevic was an all star, which I feel like he should have been one. He was one of their the best players in the East for a long time, and he finally was able to get there. Um, one thing I say about this team, this team is one of those teams that could definitely make it to the playoffs if things go right and if they can stay healthy. Um, I think Orlando is a sneaky, decent team. Um, when you look at this roster, they are a team that's going to be fighting for one of those bottom seeds um, like Miami and like other teams like Detroit. So I put them up there with those teams for that spot of the seventh or the eighth spot um, in the Eastern Conference. Um, other than that, this team has really had a huge reconstruction. They took Alpha Rico Minu for nine million in the off season. A guy that can play some three, a guy that can play some four, a guy that can be a capable three point shooter, not a reliable one. He a little inconsistent, but he has made strides and improvements on that end. And he gives them a great defender that can guard some wings that they have trouble guarding. He always been known as a good defender, even when he couldn't shoot, but he is still known for that. DJ Augustine is a little bit overpaid at age 31. He gave everything he could to this team, not being really a starting point guard. He's really a backup point guard at best. He tried and gave all he had, and it helped him. And he they even helped him win a playoff game against the eventual NBA champs, the Toronto Raptors. You also look at Mobamba, a guy that was beat up and injured majority of the season, but he still is only 21 years old. He's a legitimate seven-one, has the athletic and mobility. He has the ability to potentially knock down jumpers and threes. He has a high ceiling because of his athletic ability, his wingspan, and his um, you know, youth. He has a chance to be something special. He just didn't show too much in the season, plus injuries really derailed his season. But I think Mobamba is a guy that you want athletic, mobile, lanky, and has the ability to be a good help in rotation and lockdown defender and potential defensive player of the year candidate. But that's all potential. It don't mean he's going to realize it. We've seen what happened to Dragon Bender. We've seen what happened to Marquise Chris. We've seen what happened to Alex Lynn. Just because Mobamba has that potential don't mean he's going to realize it in Orlando. But it's still there um, if they do develop it. Michael Carter Williams was a guy they picked up last year late. And he ended up contributing to this team. They wanted to bring him back. Some people forget that Michael Carter Williams is only 27 years old, even though it seemed like he's been around forever. He still is young. I don't expect him to get a lot of minutes, but he is a guy that can be a jack of all trades. And he has shown that he can be a better scorer than he was in the, in the past. Evan Fournier really showed out in FIBA, showing that he, he can be a ball handler and a decent playmaker. Um, at that shooting guard position, a legitimate six seven with nice touch. Um, he just a guy that doesn't have the athletic ability and the takeover mentality, and you know he's just a good shooting guard, not anything special. 
you look at Markel Fultz, I'm still on a Markel Fultz bandwagon. I'm still on a Markel Fultz island. I love me some Markel Fultz in high school and in college. The injury to his shoulder really took his career for a loop. Not really being able to get any playing time and not really being able to show what he has developed because of the shoulder. But I still have high hopes for him because he has the ability to handle the ball, knock down floaters, knock down mid-range, get to the paint and finish, being a decent free throw shooter, and he has the ability to shoot spot up threes and off the dribble threes, which is the modern day shooting guard and point guard, being able to play make, handle the ball in between game and knock down threes, but also being a passer. Um, that's what the modern day point guards and shooting guards do and he fits that mode The only problem is he hasn't been able to stay healthy enough to realize that potential and he hasn't played enough games But other than that for what he has done and what he has shown to be able to do He was worth taking a gamble on because he is very very young and he still does have the potential to be something special And this is a team that hasn't really hit on draft picks But to have a guy that can be a potential all-star for you It's hard not to take that gamble and I'm kind of surprised they did it but also I can see why they did it so to me this was a good pickup and a good risk if he don't work out you can just let him walk because he's going to be a restricted free agent in the future or you can always extend him for less money because he hasn't really been able to produce and then you got a quality all-star for cheap just like he is on this rookie contract kind of remind me a lot of Dante Exum a guy that has huge potential in the right type of body and can play multiple positions but just couldn't stay healthy but he still is worth an NBA spot because he's an NBA player he just hasn't been able to play um, you look at Aaron Gordon a guy with huge potential and he's starting to become a decent player he's starting to develop into something decent showing that he can be a decent defender being a decent three-point shooter and still trying to play more than his role that's the only thing can he be a ball handler can he be a guy that can be a franchise player for you it doesn't look like it at this point which is kind of surprising because they took him so high because of his potential and he's showing that he looks more like a third or fourth option on a good team and that's just my personal opinion after watching him jerry and grant uh may not be on this team signed with isaac humphreys Jonathan Isaac is a special player because he has shown defensive potential, has the length and the size to play multiple positions, and that's what you want nowadays in the NBA, and he has that ability, showing that he can be a capable shooter, showing that he can be a guy that can rebound, get out in transition, and switch and guard multiple positions, and that's what you want, and he has that ability just about staying out of foul trouble and being able to knock down jumpers consistently off the ball and still being able to create a shot a little bit more on the ball. You want Jonathan Isaac to be a superstar. You don't want him to be a role player, and he is far from that, but he is only 21. Same with Markel Fultz and same with the other guys on this team. They have some young, young pieces with loads of potential. It's just about getting them on the court and, and developing them and producing them into their full potential, and I want to know if Orlando can do that. You look at um, Terrence Ross getting a nice $12 million extension. Um, this is a guy that can heat up. He can knock down threes. He can play off the ball. He can come off screens and knock down shots. Continues to put pressure on the defense because of his shooting ability and his ability to knock down shots and create shots if you don't respect him. So to me, I, I like Terrence Ross. I don't know if I would have paid the money for him. But he is a guy that knows the role, knows the system, and he very, he had a very, very successful season uh, with Orlando Magic. So they wanted to bring him back because they had something special going on. He's a guy that can even fill in and be a starter, but also come off the bench and not complain and be happy with that role and, and really utilize his skills to the best of his ability. So he's a guy that can get hot. He's a guy that can win you games. He's a guy that can steal you games. And those are the type of guys that you usually want on, on your team. Was it worth the $12.5 million? I'm not going to say that. But it also isn't that terrible of a deal if he continues to produce like he did last season. So at the end of the day, when you look at this Orlando Magic team, they have a lot of great prospects. They have the ability to be competitive right now while also have the young talent that can develop and help them in the future. And then they got guys that has the athletic and the mobility and the bodies to be something special down the line. While they're still competing for a playoff spot, hopefully this year, which it looks like, they still do have those pieces that can still develop into something special, even if they don't go to the lottery, which is the spot you don't want to be in. 
you don't want to be in the spot where you can't get a top 10 pick, but you also can't make the playoffs, or if you do your first round exit. But Orlando is different because they can have the ability to make the playoffs, but they also have guys that can be potential stars if they continue to develop them. And if they have the work ethic and they really have the hunger to be great, they still have the potential to compete for a playoff spot, but also bring up young guys that can be potential all-stars at the same time. So Orlando, they're in a good spot. Having veterans and guys, you know, that know the system and know their role, but also having guys that could be future stars for them at the same time, they want to be competitive. Not too many teams can do this. Not too many teams is in this position. But Orlando, I do have them um, missing the playoffs. I have my teams already made. And since you guys know Washington Wizards is going to be the last video I have for the playoffs, Boston, Brooklyn, um, obviously, I, I will have um, Philly, Toronto, which will be four teams right there. Detroit, Milwaukee, Indiana, Miami, and the last team will definitely be the Pacers. So those are my eight teams that I have making the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. And Orlando, to me, I didn't pick them to make the playoffs last year, and they surprised us. Cause they made it at the end. I didn't have Brooklyn making it last year, and I do have them making it this year. So I was wrong on those two, and I can be wrong again. But those are my eight teams that I have in the Eastern Conference making the playoffs, and I do not have the Orlando Magic having one of those spots. Let me know who you think gonna have one of those spots. Let me know if you think Orlando Magic making the playoffs. I'm sleeping on them, I'm overrating them, like I did last year, or do you think that they won't make it this year because? A lot of teams have gotten better, and a lot of teams are better than Orlando on paper. And, you know, this is a team that really prides themselves of understanding where guys that living off the chemistry that they had last year and still trying to build upon what they did last year by trying to do it even better this year. Like I said, Brooklyn and Orlando slid barely into the playoffs last year, and they surprised everybody. But at the same time, people going to be more prepared. People going to be ready for this Orlando team. Will they be able to defend and score enough points to make it to the playoffs again? I don't see it, but I didn't see it last year and they made it. So let me know what you guys think about the Magic. Let me know who your all top eight teams in the Eastern Conference will be. And let me know um, how you feel about this video in the comment section below. I read every comment um, and I respond. So let me know what you guys think about my Magic pick. And let me know if I'm sleeping or underrating them or do you think they're going to make it or not. And let me know why in the comment section below. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft. And I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 